The Lightroom and Photoshop 2021 updates include a ton of new features, but there is one in particular that has the potential to help make ordinary images look extraordinary, and that is color grading. We'll dive into two key areas. First, we'll see how some sliders are exactly the same as the old split toning to help you easily adapt. And second, we'll dive into the new sliders and how to optimize them for even better results. Let's start with the old version of Lightroom where I've already processed an image using the legacy split toning sliders. So what I've done is I've left Lightroom in the legacy split toning version. I've not yet updated Lightroom. When we get to Photoshop, that's when you'll see the new color grading. So what we have here are three versions of the same image. We've got my raw image, then I've got a version that I've processed with everything other than split toning. It's still at the defaults. And then I took that version and I added some split toning to it. And you can see that my Hue and saturation for the highlights have been adjusted to make the highlights warmer. My hue and saturation have been adjusted to make the shadows cooler. And I've shifted the balance a little bit in favor of the highlights here. So just take note of these slider values because when we get to Photoshop, you'll look at the color grading and you'll see the same numbers, but the interface is gonna look a bit different. So with this approach, what I would normally do is blend the best of the sky with the best of the foreground because I want this more natural looking foreground here with this warmer sky. I don't necessarily want to use the split toning everywhere in the image. So normally what I would do is send both of these over to Photoshop to blend them. But for the sake of comparison to the original raw, I'm going to send that as well. So just command or control click on those, right click, go to edit in, and we'll send them over as smart objects in Photoshop. So here inside Photoshop, we have, of course, our three smart objects, but they're in different documents. We need to combine them together so we can start blending. And we'll do it by clicking on pre-blend in Lumenzia choose to blend the documents, and we can close the additional unneeded images there. So now we have all three smart objects together. Let's quickly rename them. On bottom here is, of course, our raw image. I'm going to right click and make it red and hide it because it's just there for comparison. Next up, we'll take a look at the base image here. Let's rename that. And then on top of it, we, of course, have our split tone version for the sky. Now what we want to do is bring through the best parts of this sky here, and we can do that with a layer mask. We'll alt click for a new black layer mask that hides everything because black conceals. Now we hit B for our brush using white paint for the foreground, high opacity, low flow, start brushing on this layer mask, which is going to selectively reveal that split tone version of the image, which is going to enhance the sky. Now we can control where it's going to show through and I'm going to let some of it come through in little areas of reflected light in the foreground. But for the most part, it's heavily focused on the center area around the sun there. And you can see from before to after how nicely that improves the image with this blended version from the split tones. We're not using split toning everywhere because if we did that, if I shift click here, we'll see it everywhere. You can see how it creates some pretty nasty shadow values. It's not what I want. The sky has less contrast. But by blending the two together, we get a really nice looking image. And that's all done with the legacy split toning, but we can do so much more with the new approach. And even if we don't, we still need to understand it. So let's explore the new color grading. Now, if we double click on this, it's going to open up. And remember that we edited this image in Lightroom using split toning, but I've already upgraded Photoshop. So they're on different versions. And what I see here is the new color grading in Adobe Camera Raw because I have updated Photoshop. And the nice thing is that all the old sliders, they map directly to something in this new interface. So nothing breaks, nothing changes. It just looks really different, but everything is in here. And we can explore that by going through these one by one. If I click on the shadows, we'll zoom into shadows. We could click on the shadows dot versus the highlights dot, for example. But in the shadows here, you can see the hue and saturation, or if you don't see them, this little white triangle, make sure you click that to open this. But the 225 hue and the 25 saturation, those are the exact values I had just a moment ago back in Lightroom. So they come through exactly as they were and they do the exact same thing. Same thing for the highlights. I have 35 and 90 for my hue and saturation. They're the exact same slider values, no differences at all. And there's a fifth slider in Lightroom and that is the balance slider, which is also here and that's the exact same 10 value. So the old and the new version, as long as you only play with those five sliders, you get the exact same results. The difference is that there are some new sliders. We've got this blending slider, there's a luminance slider. We have a whole new set of adjustments for midtones, 
and there's even a global adjustment. So let's explore what these are, what they do. But before we do that, I want to quickly add a gradient to the bottom of the image. It'll be easier to understand when we're looking at a neutral background to understand what's going on with color gradient. So let's cancel this and let's create that. Let's go and I'll start from my base image. Let's just create a copy, hit Command J, and I'm just going to call this uh, color grading. So we'll do our color grading on the version that doesn't have any color grading or split toning on it to begin with. And to create a gradient, I hit Command Shift N and call this new layer gradient, hitting G for the gradient tool and dragging from left to right. We get a black to white gradient or shadows, midtones, and highlights here. Of course, I want to still see the image. So let's put a mask towards the bottom of the image. I'm going to hit M for the rectangular marquee, draw a little rectangle and add this as a layer mask. So now we have this convenient gradient for reference and to make it even easier, I'm going to use an adjustment you probably don't normally use, but if you go to the adjustments, the adjustment layers that is in Photoshop, go to posterize, you probably never use this. It converts to a limited set of colors, whatever number of levels is the number of colors. So with four, I get four shades of gray. If I go to 11, then I get an Ansel Adams style zone system down below. So very, very convenient. And of course I don't want it on the image. Let's just put it on half of the gradient below. So to do that, again, I'm gonna hit M for the rectangular marquee, target this area here. Let's just go and get rid of that starting white mask and then click for new layer mask from the selection. And so now we have that wedge down below and I'm gonna quickly put a clipping mask on it to clean things up and then just right click these, make them red to just note that, hey, they're just here for the purpose of learning but now we can do the color grading on the image and see what's going on down below. And that'll just make things a little bit easier to understand. So I'm gonna command click on this layer and let's wrap all three of these into a smart object by right clicking, converting to a smart object. And now that they're all in one smart object, we can adjust all of them with the same color grading. We just go up to filter, camera raw filter, and now we have all the color grading controls, but we can do it on an image where we see what's going on with a reference here that'll be a lot easier to understand. So let's take a look at our highlights. You know, normally we could go in, we could set a hue, set a saturation, and it affects the image. You can also see it affecting here the, uh, the wedges in the foreground of this, this gradient. And so let's go and add, we'll just go to 100% saturation here. Let's go down to the shadows and you can move things here or with the slider. So I've been working these sliders, which if you don't see them, by the way, click this little white triangle to make the hue and saturation slider appear. You can adjust these if you want individually, or just go right up to this wheel and every position on this wheel corresponds to some slider value. The farther you get from the center, the higher the saturation. And then as you drag around, the angle determines the hue. So we can just go down to like 225. We get a nice cool shadows here and I'm at 100% saturation. And what you see here is very cool shadows and very warm highlights. And let's start to explore now where things can be a little different, where you get a little more control. And the first obvious thing is we have mid-tone adjustments. So right now it's neutral, but if we drag it out towards say the greens, now you can see we get greens in our mid-tones. So you have a lot more control over not only having three different colors, but you can also change a little bit more where things kind of break down. When I started toning this image originally, I worked with highlights and I worked with shadows because those are the only options I had. But shadows are really the rock much more than say like the darker parts of the sky. That's more of a mid-tone. So for color grading this image, I actually just want to work with highlights and mid-tones. And now I have that option with the mid-tone. We'll come back and do a real color grade in a moment, but let's just finish exploring the options below here. Now you notice we also have this luminance slider that is new. And I don't generally use this too much because I find that it kind of reduces contrast. And if you're looking for portrait image that's very stylized, that might be helpful. But for landscape work, I don't generally like it. But where I do like it is if we go over to say highlights, notice we cannot add any color to white. It just, it won't pick up any color. White has no saturation. But if we grab the luminance and bring it down, now it will pick up a color. So this luminance slider is a great way of pushing even more color into nearly blown highlights if that's what you need to do. Of course, it you know as a luminance slider, you could go down to the shadows and you see how dark the shadows are now. We could go and grab the luminance, bring it up and start to fill in 
those shadows if that's what we want to do. But as you can see, it looks pretty washed out. You start getting that kind of Instagram filter look. And that's why I don't usually use the luminance slider. But I think in the case of the highlights going to negative luminance, that is something that can be useful. However, I would say, you know, if you're just trying to restore detail or something, go to the basics tab and use the regular exposure, you know, shadows, whites, blacks, highlights. Use those first because you'll get better results than by playing with luminance in the color grading. That's not what this is really for. So that's the luminance, the midtones. Uh, of course, we have the global adjustment. And if we go and start changing this, you see how it imparts a color cast across the entire range of the image. I wouldn't say this is a, an adjustment that I am going to use personally, but it's there if you want to adjust all of the colors in your image. I'm going to stick with highlights, midtones, and shadows. And then down below here, we have the blending and the balance. Let's step back so we can see all three of these at once. Because of course, you can adjust these right here if you want to adjust you know, highlights, midtones, and shadows directly on this grid view. You won't see the sliders behind them like you normally do, but you do see the numbers here. So it's very easy to see those. And with the, the blending and the balance, the balance does what it's always done, which is determine the break points. So you know, here I'm determining what color the shadows, midtones, and highlights should be, but I'm not telling Lightroom, I'm not telling Photoshop where they are. If I want to have the shadows creep higher up into the range, well, I should slide the balance left towards the shadows. And you see how now it's much more dominant to my shadow tone here. If I slide it to the right, I get the opposite, and it's much more dominant to my highlight tone. Let's go make this red to make it even more obvious there. You see how strongly that affects things. So the balance is just determining where the split occurs between shadow, midtone, and highlights. And then blending is determining how much things feather or overlap. So right now there's some natural transition. There's a bit of a yellowish tone between the greens and the reds because we've got blending. If I bring that blending down, I get a, a harder delineation between them. There's still some blending, but there's less. My highlights are more clearly red. My midtones are much more clearly green. My shadows are more clearly blue. Whereas if I go towards the maximum, I get so much blending that I don't even see a discrete green anymore. It, it's having an effect. If I go and grab that green and I bring the saturation down, you see that it does have an effect, but it's just so mixed between the different colors. You don't see green on its own. I wouldn't say the blending slider is something I use too often, but it is nice to feather the colors. However, the, the balance slider is really useful. And the way you would normally use this is you can actually hold on Alt or Option to preview everything at 100. So right now, if I back off to more realistic saturation values, because you wouldn't normally be at 100, it can be hard to see the blending and the balance. But if you hold down Alt or Option, it temporarily previews at 100%. Same thing with the blending. So that's a quick way of setting these, which should be done after you set these up above. Lastly, you know what's the easiest way to set these? If we go into the highlights here, you can, of course, work with these sliders like we've done in the past. Go pick your hue, pick your saturation. But the easiest way to do it is just slide out to the outer edge where you have 100% saturation. You can view the hue and then go find your hue and then just drag back to find the amount you want. And if you want to use some keyboard shortcuts to make it even easier, holding the shift key will restrict you to only changing the saturation. Holding the command and control key will make it so you're only changing hue. And then if we go and hold on the Alt key, you get small movements here. You can see I'm moving the mouse a bunch and it's not moving that much. Whereas if I let go of that, I get big movements. So Alt lets you go more precise. And here's the way I would use all this. Let's reset and do the actual color grade down. I'm going to reset the color grading. Let's go back to the main view here. I'm going to go on the highlights, which is over here. Click and drag to the outer edge. Find the hue that I want. And I think in this case, right around 35 or so. Then hold shift, so lock that hue, and then bring back the saturation. I think maybe around like 80, 90 is great. So I've set my highlights. I know now I want to target the midtones, not the shadows. So let's go to the midtones. And in this case, I'm going to go and drag it towards cooler colors. I think right around 225 is good. Let's back that saturation off to maybe around 40 or so. That's looking pretty good. So I've just set the color. I don't need to do anything more to the shadows. I just want to do affect the sky areas. I wouldn't mind adding a little more contrast in the sky. And like I said before, I don't normally play with the luminance too much. 
but I think this is one case where it could be a little helpful. And if I take the midtones and raise them up a bit, I'll kind of lighten some sky areas there. So maybe bring that up towards like 50 and you can see the luminance there, the L is showing 46. And we can grab the shadows and bring those down towards maybe minus 50 or something like that. So we've added a little bit more contrast in those sky areas. And if you want to preview these, we can turn off the shadows for a second by clicking this little eyeball and you see you know, before and after how it's adding more shadow contrast or with the midtones, we're going to get that toning and the, the color at the same time there. But you can isolate those different changes that way. So I think that the wheels are in good shape. I'm not going to play with the global adjustment. That's not something I want to play with pretty much ever. Uh, but I do want to go take a look at the blending and the balance. I think the balance is the first thing to get right. So let's go hold down alter options. We get a stronger preview and let's move it until we get the right kind of sky glow. And I think around oh, 70, 75, I feel like is nicely lighting up the sky there and just pushing more of the warmth. So I'm more highlight dominant by sliding the balance to the right. And now the blending, again, hold down alt or option and drag that until it feels like things are in the right zone. And, you know, I think actually right around 50 is just fine. I don't need to smear these colors. Let's let them be where they are, but that is an option. So with that, we'll click OK, and that's our toning. But of course, uh, I don't want this wedge, so let's just quickly fix that by double-clicking our Smart Object, hiding these layers, close the Smart Object, and save changes back up to the parent document. And let's just get rid of the old split toning version and take a look at what we've done with our image here, starting from the original RAW. We've got this fairly uh, drab-looking image, and we've created our base image, and then with split toning here brought through those colors and i made one mistake i should have brought over that mask so let's go step back our history a step here to take this mask i'm going to alt drag it down to duplicate it now get rid of this and now i have this so let's try that again here so we've got our raw image then we had our base and then we use the split toning to create that beautiful sky for an overall adjustment from here to here and now clicking into this next video, we'll learn more about how to create beautiful sky color.